Hello everyone, I am Lamani and I'm bringing you my first of hopefully many New World videos. Today we're going to be focused on gold making and harvesting leveling. So there's going to be two categories of harvesting that we're focusing on, the first of which is spices. All oregano, paprika, and peppercorn can be found in Monarch's Bluff and they're going to get you some pretty great gold depending on where you're going to sell it. The other focus is farm plants. We're going to be looking at corn, strawberries, and barley specifically, although there are some others. All of these are going to sell extremely quickly and can make you some great gold for starting in the game. So here is our route. You can tell by my fine penmanship with this marker that I put a ton of time into figuring out the pathing to be the most optimal and make you the most gold. So if you look at this in phase one, you're going to move throughout the beach of Monarchs, almost getting to town, looping around, and then you're gonna climb up into the hills. Phase two is then the farm phase in which you're gonna to go to each farm location, drown yourself in the river because it's the most effective fast travel, and then use the campfire warp method to return back and restart your farming cycle. The other big thing to mention is while running this route, keep your eye out for all kinds of other nodes like iron, um, hemp, life bloom, all the other plants that are out in the world. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see here, I am in Monarch's Bluff, uh, right towards the starting area, right between the Watchtower and Turtle Spit Cave. So what you're going to do is you're going to start right here on this pack of nodes specifically herb nodes that's going to be our main focus here and as you can see i'm going to start gathering them and you can already tell that i'm starting to get the spices that we had mentioned previously <clears throat> what you're going to want to do after you gather this first pack is you're going to just want to follow this eastern rock wall and continue to grab every single herb that you see so sometimes there's going to be others that haven't spawned yet so you'll see throughout this that i'll be looking left and right on both sides making sure that i get every single herb when you're looking at these herbs, make sure you go for them, even if they're a single herb standing there alone, because every herb is money, right? That's the focus here. We're trying to make gold. So you'll just keep following along the rock wall, like I had mentioned, keep going, and you're going to get almost to the point of town. Once you get to the point where you start to see wolves spawning, you're going to stop there and you're going to loop back around. Alright, so once you get to the point where you loop, you're going to want to follow the beachhead. You're not going to want to stay on the beach itself because you're not going to have any herb spawns and it's just going to be a waste of your time. You're going to go into these weird kind of swampy trees. It's a little hard to get through them, but you're going to hug the rock and you'll find a couple more spawns and just keep following the spawns as you see them. Again, just keep your eyes out because sometimes they'll randomly spawn right in front of you. Um, you might hit a timer for a different pack of nodes and then it's just more money right there. So you'll keep following it along, past the watchtower, and try to loop back right to where we started. You're going to get to the point kind of where we started and you're going to see this rock face. It looks a little bit like some steps, that's how I start to recognize it. And when you look at it initially, you're going to think, okay, maybe I can't climb this thing. It's a little, a little daunting. But due to the incredible climbing physics of this game, we can climb up a near vertical wall. So if you just run to this corner, look at the wall, kind of move left and right, you can jump back up. And then you can climb up. Sometimes you'll find some iron nodes up here. Gather whatever you want on your way, but make sure you keep heading over to this farm. Alrighty, so once you get to this first farm building, you're going to end up making a loop around it. The focus here is corn. And I've listened to enough country music to know two things about corn. It's either going to make my baby feel a little frisky, or it's going to be used to make the finest of cheap beers to drink while driving my Ford F-150. Corn's going to make you some really fast gold, and its price is rather volatile throughout prime time. But regardless, it's always going to be a consistent form of some income. Alright, once you get here, you'll start to see the great value version of the Incredible Hulk. Go along, grab these herbs next to the cart, watch out for the mob, he can aggro onto you and just be kind of annoying and stunlock you sometimes, but if you're high enough level you won't aggro him. 
You're going to hit this chest, there'll be some low-level greens, some gold, maybe some uh, linen or silk, something like that. And in that house, there's two other chests if you want to go for them, if you want more sandpaper or anything like that. I always grab this chest and I go to here and grab this crate for provisions. It can have things like tomatoes, rice, all that good stuff for cooking. But the big piece over here is that you go over to this corner and there's four strawberry spawns. These are going to be the only strawberries on the route, but strawberries sell for a ton of money. And you can really rack them up as you keep doing this route over and over again. And a lot of people tend to neglect them. So just make sure you hit those. All right, so let's jump forward here. What you're going to do is you're just going to keep looping around this farm building, grabbing whatever herbs are there. You're going to get up to the pond, and once you're at the pond, grab whatever spawns are over there. And this is where we're going to start to get to the crucial point of the run, where we have to place our campfire. So you can see I put down a yellow waypoint somewhere in that region, uh, relatively close to the farms over there. You need to place your campfire so that you can do a, a death warp from the river. You can gather whatever herbs you want up on this hill. Just make sure you find a nice spot to put it and that it's within 500 meters of the river. Something else to note is that there's three arrows, one to each farm, and that's just depending on what vegetables you want to all grab. There's other cabbage, broccoli, and squash, but I only go to one field in the northern farm and one field in the southern farm, as you'll see on the route. So here we are in the northern field. The main focus here is barley. Unfortunately, in this clip, there's only two nodes that spawn, but there can be like 10 nodes that spawn all at once. It just depends on the time of day, and it looks like there's some people around here. There's also more corn spawns than there are here in the video, but again, the people probably collected them. There's some supply caches too if you want to grab those, but mainly focus on the barley and corn. Once you're done there, you're going to head towards the water, but specifically you're going to run for this cluster of trees between the farms. So you're going to go around, there's tons of orb nodes that'll give you some more profit. And the main thing is that you skip this farm in the middle. There's nothing really valuable unless you want to go for cabbage and broccoli, which doesn't really sell for a lot. Uh, just go tree to tree, hit each herb node, and you're going to end up at the southern farm. Okay, so once you get here, the real focus here is hemp. As you can see, there's a bunch of hemp plants, but they are being farmed by other players. Hemp can spawn in each of these rows, and I've had it where there's up to three rows just completely full. There's also giant hemp plants that spawn on the outside of the stone wall. Again, more supply caches if you want to go for them, get some sandpaper and things to sell like that. That'll make you some money too. Once you grab all the hemp that you want, or if you even want to grab it, make sure you're within 500 meters of your campfire, run over to the river, dive in if you want to have some fun, and drown yourself. Once you've drowned yourself, you'll respawn back at that campfire. Uh, there'll be life bloom that respawns, all kinds of other flowers if you want to go for those again. I think it's valuable if you're really trying to focus on leveling harvesting. And then make your way back down to the farm, and we can restart the route. Alright, so let's talk some results. This is what I found after three whole runs. You can see a lot of spices, corn, barley, strawberries, and that little green piece of paper is a recipe I found in a chest. So you can find some things like that, a lot of fiber too that you can sell. The main focus though, is once I calculated my gold totals, is that I focused on selling in Windsward, which is where my highest kitchen was to cook. So a lot of people will be running there for foods and spices. Based on the theoretical values of what I undercut at because I'm lazy and want to sell right away, excluding the tax fee on the market, I came with about approximately a total of 6,480 gold and 11 cents, if you want to say cents with gold. Something else you could do to maximize your complete effort is to have gear with intelligence as well as various harvesting perks as well as a scythe with harvesting yield on it. If you did all that to maximize the amount of yield, you could definitely get exponential growth here and see a lot more profit on your gold per hour. If any of you choose to do that, I'd love to hear about it in the comments section, maybe hear about what you're starting to find. Otherwise, that's all that I have for you today. I really appreciate you watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe, and I'm really looking forward to making more videos. Thank you so much.